If you typed in something like Forex Review and this video popped up and you've never seen this channel before, just know that I am not here to review anything. What this is is an overall review of how we trade our system here at No Nonsense Forex because a lot of people right now think they're here in the process when in reality a lot of them are closer to here. So we're going to take a step back and put all these pieces together, but if you've never seen this channel before, hang out with us anyway. God forbid you actually love what you see. But for the rest of you, I think this video is very important because procedure and structure is very important. And we have talked about that quite a bit, but we've done it in sections. We've never actually put all of those sections together. So when you start your trading day all the way to where your trading day ends, what does that process look like? Um, so in this video, what we're going to do is show the process that I go through every trading day. Um, you don't have to follow my exact structure, but I think it helps to actually see it because a lot of you are trying to follow this system to the letter. So once you put it all together, this part is obviously very important. Now, uh, there is one piece of the whole puzzle I've yet to mention. It's not a really huge piece or anything like that, but it's a little tool that I use that I think can help you guys as well in terms of organization. And then along the way, um, if you haven't seen every single video and read every single blog, I am going to reference every place where I found the step that I'm showing you. So if you're confused by it or you don't quite understand it, you'll know exactly where to go. Now I'm not going to do what I normally do and just put it down in the description because that's going to be a lot of links, that's a lot of work, and I think it's really easy to find. All you have to do is click on my channel and you can just type in the search bar um, what you're looking for and it should take you right there. Um, but I'll still try to make it easy for you by referencing what video I'm talking about. Now. For those of you who have not been here before and are seeing this for the first time and you're hanging out with us anyway, we appreciate you. Let me just tell you kind of what we do. The very first thing I make sure I do is just weed out all the people that want me to just give them a system and have them go trade it. Um, that's being really lazy. If I were to do that, you would still screw it up and then you'd blame me. That's no good. Uh, people here put in the work. I give you the structure and the framework and you fill in the blanks and lo and behold when you do that the magic starts to happen right away uh, you can ask anybody that's done this from start to finish uh, but for the people who don't want to put in the work or for people who don't like the way i talk we do a really good job of getting rid of them from the beginning now we also trade the daily chart here this is something that not a lot of people are used to seeing this is not what a lot of people had in their heads when they said, I'm going to trade Forex someday. But this is what we do here. I have gotten a lot of people away from trading smaller time frames and into the daily chart, and the transition has been really, really great. And now there are people who trade our way but still insist on trading on smaller time frames, which is fine. This system works on all of them. But there are specific benefits to doing things on the daily chart that we really try to emphasize on this channel. And this was in episode three of my podcast, if you want to check that out further. All of my podcast episodes can also be found on my YouTube channel. And then when it comes down to actually what we do when we trade, we put together a system of indicators. Now, a lot of you over time have heard nothing but negative things about indicators. But what you did not take the time to realize is the people who are telling you this have never used any of the indicators beyond the very common ones. And the very common indicators, for the most part, are absolutely terrible. So, of course, they're going to have a negative outlook on these. But when you go beyond the scope of the 10 or 12 or 15 indicators that everybody knows, you can find some really, really great ones that do a great job pretty much doing all of the work for you. And if you find other ones and find how they can play well with each other and then put those together, then things really, really start to get good. And so that is what we do here. And one of the greatest benefits to putting this all together and doing it on the daily chart is you only have to trade for 10 to 15 minutes a day. You own your trading. Your trading does not own you. You own your time. 
and you don't have to sacrifice results to do it. Now, what we've been doing so far, up until right now, is we have put together all of the pieces of the algorithmic structure. Now, I kind of let them out little by little, um, spent a good amount of time on each piece, made sure people didn't jump too far ahead, and now we have all of the pieces in place. Um, then, I said, now that you have all those pieces, in the very last podcast I did, episode 47, I said, okay, here is how you go and back test it. Because this is a really, really important piece, and if you don't do this piece correctly, you're setting yourself up to fail later. Um, but what I hadn't covered yet, and what I think is the perfect time to do it right now, right here, is how, from start to finish, I actually trade it all. What is the procedure I follow? And I think if you guys want to trade this way, following my procedure can only help you. And then if there's any pieces that you don't like or just they're out of order to you, you can fix them later on. Uh, but people really have been asking for a start to finish video. And I think this video is going to go a bit on time. And so I'm not going to go to my actual charts, but we don't need to. I think if you guys just take notes and follow the structure I give you, that this will be more than enough as far as a step-by-step -step process to follow. And like I said before, I'm going to reference each video where each of these concepts actually came from. Just in case you're a little bit lost or you've forgotten, you can go back and reference it so it'll become clear to you later. Now, let's move on. Here are the steps. Get your notes out. This is the outline that we are going to follow. Now, before I do anything, um, as a lot of you guys know, I don't do anything until 1.40 p.m. Pacific Standard Time because this is 20 minutes before the daily candle is about to close. At this point, I have all of the data that I most likely need to make a really informed decision. Usually nothing is happening in that last 20 minutes of the day. So I can take what we have, look at my indicators, and decide on what to do. Um, if you want more information as to why this is, or if you are not around at this time and want to find an alternative, this was episode 23 of the podcast. Um, but before I do anything, it's got to be 1.40 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That gives me ample time to do everything I need to do because, like I said, it only takes me 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes not even that long. So the very next thing I do before anything even gets brought up is I consult the EVZ, the uh, the Eurovix on barchart.com. This was on the volume volatility video. Um, we have referenced this tool in the past. I need to see where volume is. Even if I pretty much have an idea of where it is, I still look at this first just to see what the mar what the overall market condition is in terms of volume. Do we have a lot of volume in the market right now? Do we not have a whole lot? This is going to influence the way I trade in terms of how much risk I put on every single trade. We are trend traders. We need volume. We need to see if overall is the volume there or is it not. Even if it's not, I will still often trade, but it's just a matter of how much risk I'm willing to put on those trades. So once I have done that, then I move on uh, to my news calendar at forexfactory.com. This is in the Forex News video. Uh, it might be in the description, the place where I get mine, or it might be in the blog for that episode. I don't recall, but it's somewhere in there um, if you want to find and follow the one that I use. But I need to see, are there any news events coming up in the next 24 hours that are significant enough for me to avoid? If there is, I will write that currency down on my notepad because that is going to tell me that no matter what you do from here on out, you're not going to be trading that currency. So you can just pretty much skip over all of those pairs in terms of me looking for a new trade to enter. And this is going to cut down on time, which is good. It's going to keep me from avoiding the temptation of entering these trades anyway if I got a sweet setup because look, if you have a news event coming up in the next 24 hours that can ruin your trade, you don't want any part of that trade. We handle things we control here. We get rid of the things we cannot control. And so this is a really crucial step, and it is also a time-saving step in a lot of cases. And this is what my news calendar looks like. And uh, I am recording this fairly late. It's Wednesday, almost 8 p.m. my time. But if I was going to look ahead for the next trading day, uh, which would be Thursday, 
I would look and see what I have in terms of major news events. And if you've watched that video, you will not see anything on this Thursday that I concern myself with. Uh, flash services, flash manufacturing, especially in the Euro, uh, which is so diluted because it has so many countries within the European Union. I am not concerned about any of these news events ruining my trade. It's another advantage we have by trading the daily chart. If they did go my way, chances are it would not ruin what I was trying to do. So in this particular case, I would not write down any currency to avoid. And I would go right ahead and trade all of the eight majors. But if for some reason there was, I would certainly write it down and I would just ignore anything that had to do with that particular currency. Or if I found two or three because it's a really huge news day, you know, I'd write those down too. And I just wouldn't trade them. Simple as that. But in this case, we're all clear. Um, so I can go ahead and move on. So that is the end of really the pre-work, I guess, the pre-checklist. Next, uh, it's officially time to open my charts. And once I have done that, um, I go in kind of a weird order here. I need to, before I even decide what I'm going to trade or maintain or anything like that, I consult my whiteboard. This is the piece that I was talking about earlier that I don't think I've ever mentioned. But I have a whiteboard hanging up on my wall, you know, just your everyday common, you know, you know what it is. And what I do with it is as such. On my whiteboard, I have all of my active trades written down. I am going to see these on my trading platform anyway, but I just want to be aware of them. I want to have them top of mind because that is where my money is right now. And that is what I have going. All right. I also have some upcoming possibilities. You know, maybe most of my indicators are there on a certain currency pair, but they're not there quite yet, and they're almost there. Um, anything that might be coming down the way, I actually write that down on my whiteboard as well. Um, I'm going to look at it anyway, but again, I want them top of mind when it's time to actually start trading. And if they no longer become a possibility, then I erase them. Simple as that. Um, but I want the things that I need to be looking at the closest to be top of mind, and this is how I do it. I also have anything that might pull back. Um, we talked about this in the pullbacks episode on my channel. Um, it's, this is a very specific situation. doesn't happen too often, so I don't really have this on my board a whole lot. But if the situation ever does present itself, I have a separate section on my board just for that. Um, you know, th these are just things to help my brain kind of focus on you know, what's coming up for the day. And then I have my metals and oil stuff kind of on a separate area because I do these things in two separate parts. Uh, we will actually talk about this later and we actually will have a separate playlist for metals towards the very end of the curriculum. Pretty much when all of the Forex stuff is done or 98, 99% done. We'll start diving into this, um, but that is on my board, but off to the side. Uh, and then the last thing, and I don't even have one of these anymore because I'm, I'm such a robot when I trade, which is great. But if it helps you, um, if you want to stay motivated or focused, whatever the case is, having a quote up on the board definitely doesn't hurt because I look at my board every day. If I need something to get me going, it's right there. Um, but nowadays, you know, with the experience I have and just the fact that I know that if I just keep every last little bit of emotion out of my trading, uh, I don't have a quote up there anymore and uh, I'm personally better off for it, but this part is totally up to you. So once I have consulted my whiteboard, now it's time to get to the actual nuts and bolts of things. Uh, the first thing I do when it comes time to trading is maintain the open trades that I have. I want to get those taken care of first before I start looking for new ones. Now, what does this process look like? So, I first want to do this because it almost never fails, but when it does, you really want to be aware of it and you want to handle this problem before you even think of moving on to anything else. Make sure that if price was supposed to hit your stop loss or your take profit, that it actually did. And if it did not, you need to immediately find out why. 
Now, those of you, especially with some experience under your belt, you have run into this before. And I would say most of the time, it is probably our fault. It's something we did incorrectly. But if for some reason it's not, and the problem is on your broker's side, you need to get this fixed before you do anything else. I just had this happen to me not even two, three weeks ago with Alanda. Thank God it was on demo. Um, but I called customer service and they couldn't even provide an answer. And that is a problem. This is your money. And when you do things the right way and you don't get the money that you earned because your broker fucked up, this is a problem and you need to reevaluate what your next move is going to be. And like I just said, this was on demo, and so I'm probably just going to go ahead and carry on with them. Uh, but this is a step that luckily will not come into play a whole lot. But when it does, it deserves all of your attention. So make sure this is the first thing you do. 999 out of 1,000 times, uh, you won't have to worry about this at all. So if that's the case, uh, move on to checking your exit indicator. You have already looked at your whiteboard and you've already looked at your trading software, I'm sure, and seen what open trades you have. You need to go to your charts on all of those trades and see what your exit indicator is saying. If it is telling you to exit, you don't ask questions, you immediately go to that trade and you exit out. We had a video on this called Exit Indicators and it is imperative that you do exactly what it says, exactly when it tells you to do it. Don't sit there and try to talk yourself into staying in a trade that your exit indicator told you to get out of. Just do what it says. And then once you have done that, if it applies, you now need to determine if there are any trades that require you moving your stop loss. So on the scaling out video, if prices hit your first take profit, you now need to take that old stop loss and move it to break even. Move it to where you bought or sold the trade initially. Because now you've locked in a win. And that's good. It's just a matter of how much you're going to win. And then in certain cases, if your trade is really winning, now you have to consider putting on a trailing stop and moving your stop loss even higher or lower depending on if you went long or short. Now I know because you guys have been super annoying and asking for this video right here. And I would love to bring it to you, um, but there, there's two things I want you to know with this. One, it's not going to be a super important video. Most of you, based on what you know right now, can come up with a system and a structure for putting a trailing stop in place when it is time to. You don't really, really need me to tell you how to do it. Um, when the time comes, I will show you mine, but I can pretty much say I don't think it's going to be a whole lot different from what you guys have going on right now. Now, the reason this video has not come out yet is because like a lot of my money management videos on the money management playlist, I want to be able to show you me doing this in real time. And so for that to happen, I have to be in a trade where this applies and it has to happen on a Wednesday, which is the day I shoot my videos. And those stars just have not aligned for the longest time. I mean, I've had situations where I've had to put trailing stops on, but you know, the markets have been very dead, so I haven't had a lot of them, and they just never fall on a Wednesday. So until that day comes, this video is probably not going to come out, unless I just completely run out of time and have to just show, you, show it to you on a different day and just completely screw up my own schedule. Um, but just understand that that is why this video is not out yet. But the good news is, is you probably don't need it as badly as you think you do. I actually have had this happen in metals on a Wednesday, um, but we haven't even started talking about metals yet. And those of you who trade metals know how wildly different the, the ATR is. And I don't want to confuse people any more than I already might do on some of these videos. So I'm going to be patient and wait. And I would just ask that you guys do the same. But that is what maintenance mode looks like. It's pretty simple. As soon as all of these steps have been taken and all of these questions have been answered, you can move on to looking for brand new trades. So for me, I've already looked at my whiteboard and I have those potential possibilities kind of already in my head, but I still start from pretty much the same place 
you know, I, I pull up my MT4, I start on Euro dollar, and I pretty much just go from there. So here's what I'm looking for, and here is exactly where my eyes go when I am looking for these trades. Now, we already did a video like this. It's called Indicators Basics, but we didn't have all the pieces there, um, in particular the baseline, which is the very first thing I look at. It's on top. It's right on the chart. It's hard not to see first. So that's what I'm looking at first. And then after that, I look down below at my confirmation indicator. And if neither one of those things are telling me to enter a trade, then I just move on. And this is what is normally going to happen to you as well. People see this for the first time and they're like, how do you only trade 10, 15 minutes a day? Well, because I trade the daily chart and because this situation right here is what happens more often than it doesn't. And so you can just look at these things and say, nope, and move right on to the next pair. And this process takes all of two seconds. But if my baseline does tell me go, that there is a pair that has crossed and closed above or below my baseline for the first time, what I do is immediately pull up my ATR because I know I'm going to have to use it. And then I do what we did in the pullbacks video. I measure the distance from my baseline to where price has closed or is about to close on that candle. And then there's a whole process for that. You have to watch the pullbacks video to know what that is. And then if it still says go, um, which it usually will, I look down and I check the rest of my indicators. And I see if they also say go. Um, and if any of them say no, like one of them says no, then I don't ask questions and I move on. Again, I don't try to outsmart my own system here. I don't get desperate because I haven't had an open trade to enter in a week or two. If anything says no, I say, all right, it's a no, and I move on. Now, if my entire system has given me nothing but green lights, and the answer is yes, you may enter this trade, I don't immediately go enter the trade. I write it down. I have a notebook off to the side, and I write it down, and then move on to my next pair. So yes. Low tech, old school, write it down. Why do I do this? So for one, it's for efficiency's sake. It's going to be a lot easier to go back and look at everything I wrote down and just enter those trades one after another than it would be for me to stop what I'm doing, go into my trading software, enter that trade, and then come back. All right, so writing it down really helps me kind of breeze through this whole process. And it just helps me stay organized. I have all the trades that I want to enter sitting there right in front of me. And organization is super important. I think if you're trying to take down a $5 trillion a day market, being disorganized does not work in your favor. I've always been a pretty organized person, but I need all the help I can get sometimes, especially when I'm trying to concentrate on more than one thing. So things like this really keep or help keep everything organized for me. And I think doing this can really help you too. Also, going ahead and just trading the first signal I get is going to be a really bad idea because like we discussed, I think all the way back in episode four of the podcast is let's say I want to go long Euro dollar and that's the first thing I see. Down the line, I might also want to go long on the Euro Kiwi. And we know in the system going full risk on both of those trades is a terrible idea because now I'm overextended in one currency that could on a whim decide to go the other way a lot and now I'm screwed. So just up and entering the first trade that gives you a signal is really a bad idea. You want to write these things down so I can take everything that's giving me a signal and determine how I want to trade it when it's actually time to do that. So that's why I write things down. So we talked about what happens if your baseline says yes. More often than not, far more often than not, your baseline is not going to give you anything. Um, so we know by now what to do next. We don't just move on. You got to look down and see what your confirmation indicator 
is telling you to do. And if that also tells you no, which again is going to be the majority of what you see, you just move on to the next pair. Simple as that. If your baseline says yes, you do this. If your baseline says no, then you do this right here. All right, that's your big difference. So you are going to run into situations also, not often, but we just got done talking about it not long ago. Your baseline might not give you a trade, but your confirmation indicator is. You might have a continuation trade. This was its own video. So if your baseline is not giving you anything, but your confirmation indicator is, check and see if the rules for a continuation trade are met. If you watch that video, you'll know exactly how to do this. And then once you have done that, and if those rules are actually met, I need to consult the rest of my algorithm, but just not the volume indicator. If you guys saw that video, you know. Everything else has to line up too, and then if it is, write it down, because you're probably going to enter this one too. Traders, this might seem like a lot, but all of these steps, especially over time, are literally going to take under a second. And it's just a matter of adding all those little milliseconds and half seconds up. And that's what really ends up becoming your 10 to 15 minutes a day. Um, but this is the process. This is how you scan for new trades and get them ready for trading, which is the next step. Now it's time to enter your trades. So what do we do here? Um, there is a process here for sure. First thing I got to do is figure out my risk. Um, I have my trades in front of me. Usually it's not a lot of trades, um, but even if it's one or three or four, I got to figure out how much I'm going to risk out of my entire trading account on every single one of these trades. This has to be your first step. Then on each individual trade, you need to write, find out and write down so you can plug this information right into your, uh, your actual software where your stop loss and initial take profit is going to go. Both of these concepts are in the risk video. All right, so once you have done that, you enter. You don't put in a limit order. You're not waiting for it to hit a certain price. That's price levels territory. That was its own video. We don't do that. We There's no reason to do it. Enter. <laughs> you have a trade. What are you waiting for? Put a market order in. You have your levels. Enter that sucker. Double check after you've done this to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. And once it is, let it ride. You're not going to be looking at this thing until this time tomorrow. So just make sure it's all there and then let the trade and let your system do what it is supposed to do. Don't look at it. The concept of not being a dumbass and looking at it all the time was covered in the discipline video. Uh, but now at this point, a lot of you are done. Um, for me personally, all I do now is go repeat this exact same process for metals. I'm an American. Metals have to go in a different account. It sucks. Keeping the two separate has really worked for me over time. If you're not American and you can do everything on one trading software, I still think this might be a good way to go. You're totally allowed to disagree with this part, but it just works for me. But once I have done all this, then I am done and you are too. And you're free to do whatever you want the rest of the day. If you're a maniac like me and you want to handle all the other five, six projects you got going on, great. You get to do that. You know, at least those things are mine. You know, I don't have to answer to anybody else. If you want to work your job, you get to do that without worry. If you want to spend time with your family, you can do that. If you want to smoke weed and play video games all day, you get to do that and trade. You do not have to sacrifice one for the other. I don't know who told you that, but you can really have your cake and eat it too here. And it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So in conclusion, structure is really important. Um, one of the biggest gifts that I think I've been able to give to a lot of people that didn't have one before is just a simple structure. Some people follow it closely, some people don't, but at least now they have one and that's already made a dramatic difference. But having structure in your actual day-to-day -day procedure is also very important. And even though you're not me and you might not want to do things the way I do it, I, I really hope this video helps you in that department. Um, but whatever makes sense to you, all right? This is just what I do. Take it and run with it however you want to run with it. But just know, 
In the end, you don't get to not have one. You must have a structure and follow it and follow it to the letter because this is where you actually make the money. And on this part right here, if you're doing things differently day to day, then you're not really following a system. You're not following a trading system. You're not following a system for actually entering and maintaining trades. And this inconsistency is going to bite you. If it hasn't already, it certainly will. So do not sleep on this video. Your day-to-day -day procedure should be every bit as structured and rigorous and disciplined as your actual trading system is as well. Now I think most of you who have been with me since the beginning, you're all subscribed, but uh, if you did find this video almost by mistake and you liked it, you liked the way we do things here, it kind of makes sense, it's interesting to you, subscribe. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Get on board. Um, I'm going to also put my beginner's video down below in the description as I often do and uh, also the homepage to the website. What that does is either one of those places you can go and decide, okay, from start to finish, how do I get in the right mindset? How do I know what to eliminate? How do I put this thing together? So I too can have something that just pretty much runs on autopilot and not only gives me great results, but also gives me my life back. There is no other channel on YouTube that shows you how to do these things. So now's your chance to get on board. For the rest of you, I hope this helps. Lots of really cool videos coming up. A lot of really good podcasts coming up. But you need to put this plan in action and go get it.